the universe does arise out of one consciousness and uh, that one consciousness creates the physical world. Welcome to Supernormalize, the podcast where we challenge the conventional, break boundaries and normalize the seemingly supernatural. Join me, CJ, as we explore less uncharted realms of existence and unravel the mysteries of life experience. My treasured listeners, if you have a life story or healing modality or unique knowledge that you'd love to share, reach out to me at Supernormalized, that's Supernormalized with a Z, at Proton.me. Let's together embrace acceptance of the supernatural and unusual as what it really is, completely normal. Today on Supernormalize, we embark on a transformative journey with Raymond Posh, a multifaceted individual driven by a passion for spirituality, personal growth, and awakening. As a podcaster, author, blogger, folk singer, writer, and speaker, Raymond serves as a captivating voice, believing in the transformative power of love and awakening. Through his podcasts, Our Spiritual Life, and New Ways of Being, he shares insightful conversations that explore the evolution of human consciousness. Raymond's book, Awakening to Wholeness, takes us on a profound exploration of the joy and power that comes from embracing our true selves. With nearly 30 years of experience as a seeker and student of self-development and spirituality, Raymond is dedicated to helping others find greater joy and success while making a positive impact on the world. His own spiritual journey, which witnessed a significant shift from atheism to spiritual exploration, fuels his deep interest in awakening. Drawing from his extensive background in, in, in in information technology and project management, Raymond brings a unique perspective to his spiritual pursuits, applying success mindset and conscious decision making to both his personal and professional life. Join us on Supernormalized as we delve into the realms of spirituality, personal growth and conscious living today with Raymond Posh. Welcome to Supernormalized, Raymond Posh. So Raymond, you've had quite a large sort of story in your life and um, it's played out in many and very different ways. Can you give us some of your stories so people have a background about you, about how you got to where you are and what you do and, and uh, yeah, give us some insight there. Yes. Well, I have a long story, so I will um, keep it down to a couple of minutes here. So not... <laughs> if it's long, um, it's good. That's fine. I like long stories too. So that's good. <laughs> yes. Well, I was, uh, long time ago. <laughs> I was raised on a farm in Missouri. And, um, you know, that had some very unique experiences. And uh, one of the things that really stuck with me on that was, I became very close to nature. Uh, I re and I really loved getting out and exploring in the woods and that sort of thing. But mm. um, jumping ahead to uh, my, my college years, well, actually, I was raised as a Catholic during those growing up years. And um, but when I went off to college uh, that freshman year, I uh, became an atheist. Oh. And so I kind of uh, dropped out of religion. Um, I think there were a couple of things there where I was tying together uh, my ideas about religion and the, the ideas about God or spirit. Mm. And I, I you know, I dumped it. I became an atheist, and I was, uh, I say, a contented atheist for quite a few years, uh, twenty, probably twenty some years. And then uh, one day, kind of out of the blue, uh, I was at work. I was working as a software engineer, yeah. and um, I I decided to go to a computer bookstore and walked in and picked up a book that uh, I thought looked interesting i opened up to a random page and there was my name what and uh <laughs> you no know, i don't know if you've ever had anything quite like that but it's a shock 
uh, <laughs> see your name or hear your name when you don't expect it. And yeah, true. Um, so I discovered when I looked at it that uh, the author had quoted an article that I had written and he quoted it pretty extensively. And uh, but he was talking about in his book, the same thing that I talked about in that article. But uh, what really struck me about that was that uh, the more I thought about it, and especially what happened the following day, I I didn't believe it was coincidence. I really mm. felt that there was a purpose in that and that the universe was trying to get my attention. And... Um, and, and that became reinforced the next day. Um, well, uh, so I looked at this book. It was a $50 book. And I decided when I was there, oh, that's that's too expensive. I'm not going to buy it just to have my name in print there, you know. Um, so I, I left. But the next day, I decided to go back and buy the book. <laughs> I walked into the bookstore. It wasn't, the book wasn't where it was uh, that day before. So I asked um, a clerk about it, and he had taken the book to the back, was packing it up for shipment back to the publisher. And so, you know, it really struck me is that, wow, you know, it happened the, the last day that it could happen. You know, if I had waited till then, I never know, would have known that book existed. Yeah, it was right there. So at any rate, that suddenly shifted my mind to the possibility that uh, the universe was intelligent and perhaps personal and trying to get my attention. Yeah. And um, I set off on a spiritual exploration as a result. Yeah, right. And so I've been very interested in spirituality ever since. Now that's been more than 20 years since that happened. And um, I've had a lot of uh, unusual events over that span, but um, just kind of jumping ahead, uh, I ended up uh, writing a spiritual book that's called Awakening to Wholeness. Mm. Um, and then in the last few years, well, four years ago, I started a spiritual podcast called Our Spiritual Life. And uh, it's been a popular spiritual podcast. And in the past month, a um, little over a month now, I started a new podcast that has a much more uh, clear focus to it. And it's called New Ways of Being. Yeah, nice. So the focus of that is to really talk with people about new ways of being, meaning awakening or uh and that can be mean many different things, but living in a, in a more conscious way generally. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's so important these days is with the state of the world, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, um, so now in a short story there, that's um, some of what I can talk about. <laughs> yeah. Well, I look, I'm just I'm curious. I'm actually thinking back to when you were a child and you were, um, raised a Catholic, did you actually have a sense of a connection to the faith and um, to this to you know, the spirit and um, the world at that time? You know, certainly back then, I would say no, nothing like uh, what I have now. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I've what I've discovered over the years, people who are and now this is my my own personal opinion, I guess I should say, yeah, people sure. who call themselves spiritual, but not religious. I really find to have a much stronger sense of spirituality in connection with uh, with a higher power. Yeah. You know, back in the those days when I was going to church with my family uh, to a, to Catholic services, uh, there was a lot of ritual, and uh, my family, especially my mom, was quite religious, and we you know we said the rosary at night and. Um, uh, but it, I didn't feel that it was, you know, like really connecting. It was about the rules and regulations of being a Christian or a Catholic and uh, not so much about could you actually get to know God and talk mm. to God, you know. 
Mm, well, it does sound like the, um, that sort of um, raising up in such a strict sort of uh, framework made you ripe for atheism. <laughs> well, yeah. So <laughs> I think that that decision to become an atheist there when I was a freshman in college was, I, I do remember that I had read this book uh, that I, I think I checked out of the school library and it was um, something about a new story about space and time. And it, the author had written this book about his ideas of what really made the universe work. And, and he's, he described it as being a progression, you know, in a continual state of uh, either expansion or, you know, coming into being. Uh, and I thought, well, well, that's that's a nice way to think about the universe. And I, I think I was kind of unhappy with uh, some of the Christian teachings at that time. You know, I I couldn't you know, I really I rejected the idea of hell. Uh, you know, how could a loving God have anything like that and of course uh, later i i decided well that's you know that's what a religious organization comes up with to get people to <laughs> fall into line mm. but uh uh yeah so and as as an atheist i felt very content in that belief um uh, i think i was in, in those years i know i was open to continuous learning that's something I've, I've always been big on and some of that got into, uh, you know, what consciousness is. Yeah. And I that's understanding that is so important today. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so later I ended up after I, I did all of this. I call it spiritual exploration, but it was a lot of reading uh, books about spirituality or philosophy, um, <clears throat> exploring various ideas of uh, spirituality. And I didn't jump into like one thing. I wanted to explore and, you know, a lot of different ideas, which I did. Mm. And I eventually, uh, what I really came to focus on was something that I read that got me focused on uh, wholeness, or I could call it holism, the idea that the universe is one great whole. And um, the, the, the philosophies that I focused on really was that the universe does arise out of one consciousness and uh, that one consciousness creates the physical world. And so that's, that's really the fun fundamentals of what I believe today. And, mm. But of course, at that point, I, then I was believing in a, uh, a higher power, a God, uh, infinite intelligence, whatever you want to call it. Um, right. I kind of steered away from <laughs> for a number of years from calling, you know, referring to to God, because um, that Catholic upbringing really instilled a fear of God. You know, and I so I it does for I, other people, I think. <laughs> yeah. Like. Mm -hmm. So a question for you then is because um, you said. Um, you sort of like we're looking into what consciousness is. What do you think consciousness is? Well, I understand consciousness to be. Um, yeah, okay. Let me back up just a bit here. So, um, okay. when I first started, yeah, thinking about what that means, I did not have a clear idea really at all of what what it was. I had a very vague idea. And, you know, was it the same as mind or thinking? Uh, you know, and what I've really kind of come to understand it to be is that it is, it is pure awareness. And that means that it is, uh, and, and it is a creative intelligence. So it, it is a creative force in the universe, awareness uh, is more important than mind, but a mind is a part of that. And, so, and actually, body is a, uh, a expression of consciousness as well, mm. in my understanding. So it is, 
it is totally creative and totally intelligent and totally knowing. Mm. So then the opposite of that would be an impure awareness. I mean, what would be an example of that? Well, the way most of us, you know, relate to awareness these days is through attention. Mm. You know, it's, we are aware when we put our attention on something. Yes. And that, that comes then, then to our full awareness or some level of awareness. Um, so awareness is, uh, I guess one way of defining it would be uh, it's a knowing that is uh, even instantaneous. Um, but I had one spiritual teacher uh, whose uh, audio courses I took and she she explained awareness as uh, when you are aware, you are aware of what you are experiencing. So that's primarily through the senses. and um, But it can be through an inner awareness that is kind of a, an additional. It's different than our other senses, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an inner, an inner awareness. You know, it can start with the awareness of the inner body. Uh, but if we go into that uh, with a quiet mind and expand that awareness, then it became, can become more. But certainly we're, when you're in that state of awareness, like in meditation, you're aware of your beingness. I am. I am. I exist. You know, that's always been one of the key things that uh, meditators or philosophers have talked about, uh, uh, of finding that in meditation. Mm. So what to you is um, living more conscious? How does somebody live more consciously? And uh, do you have any pro tips on letting uh -huh. that happen? <laughs> you know, that and, and that that's a great question. And um, because... Uh, one there's an organization, <clears throat> pardon me, an organization that I belong to called Humanities Team, and um, it's a nonprofit, and they uh, they want to promote uh, living consciously in the world, and um, but they also talk about presence and uh, awareness a lot, uh, but living consciously meant, means being more aware in your daily life in you know in what you are doing and in what you think about your place in the world um and you know and what you're feeling and reacting to and and being open to explore that uh consciously but it, it's certainly about about that and um you know, <laughs> consciousness is, uh, it, it's a kind of a big subject once you really dig into it. So, <laughs> you know, I'm <laughs> debating about how far to go here with that. But Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, cover, cover what you think is necessary to cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that, it, it is, it's breaking out of, a big part of it is breaking out of habit. Sure. You know, of a really of coming to a point where we make decisions more consciously instead of unconsciously out of out of habit, of uh, uh, being less immediately judgmental in you know in various kinds of situations and and kind of looking at the circumstances more. Or how do I really feel about this, or why why am I reacting in anger, or whatever that might be. So it's certainly being more aware of yourself and how you're responding to life. Mm, okay. So how has your interest in spirituality and personal growth evolved over the years and what drives your passion for awakening? You know, um, that's a great question too. Uh, I, 
I went through this phase of uh, spiritualized exploration, as I said, for, you know, it went on for more than 10 years and I read hundreds of books and, you know, really was exploring it pretty deeply. And I loved learning. And um, so it, it's really since then, it's continued as a process of continuous exploration of spirituality and being open to it. But what really has uh, ha has excited me about it is that I've you know I've learned things that really open new understanding of the world and where I fit into it, and and some of those understandings are uh, you know becoming more aware and in a sense I could say that's that's a, becoming more aware is always becoming more powerful. Mm. you you understand more about the world and you know and and yourself mm. and um so that yeah that's why and i've i've had some spiritual events along the way um that you know have continued that interest in it mm. but i always you know i love learning what what someone has discovered about consciousness or spirituality or how to uh, be different in the world. And uh, and one of the things I've really found is that when you grow spiritually, that's your inner core. That's the, the inner beingness of you. And that opens you up for uh, growth in all aspects of life, not just spirituality. So So one of the conclusions that I uh, arrived at a number of years ago was that people tend to separate spirituality from practical life or daily life, you know, oh, those are two different things, but we don't mix those. And, and business has always kind of supported that ad attitude working in a, in a job. But no, th there's really uh, no separation. I believe that life is intended to be totally spiritual mm. and uh, to to live in a much more powerful way than most people do. Right. Well, you spoke about some spiritual events there that actually uh, were possible triggers along your path. Are you able, I'm able to talk about those? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the... Um, one of the, the bigger ones that I can think about uh, that I remember it was in the in the late 90s and I um, I worked for a startup company I uh, I ended up in a different <laughs> you know I got hired to do this one thing and I they kind of diverted me to do something else and um, I was doing you know I was work doing a different kind of thing I was supporting a sales team which I had never done before Mm. Um, but at any rate, uh, the owner of the company wanted, <laughs> strongly wanted me to be, go back to what I was supposed to be doing. And, you know, some other manager had pulled me away. Mm. Um, so I did that, but it, you know, there was, I just had some disagreements with the, that CEO, uh, over a period of maybe up to a year. And uh, I got laid off with a part of a bigger layoff, but uh, and it's, I was really still really upset with that CEO. And I decided, you know, I needed to get some coaching from someone else. So I sought out a spiritual coach, and he was very focused on energy in the body, and um, you know, like um, <clears throat> chakra energy. And so he would have me do chakra energy practices. And um, as that went on, one day I had this very powerful experience that's, that's generally described as a kundalini experience, if you're familiar with that. Yeah, very. Very powerful energy rising up through the body. It's fine. Yeah. And yeah, and that, so that really stood out in, in my mind. I mean, I don't know that it was... Um, life-changing for me but uh you know certainly immediately afterwards 
my sense perception was uh, different. I could, you know, I, I was seeing the world a little bit differently, a little brighter uh, world, a little uh, more colorful world. Um, oh. But I think that kind of faded away. Yeah, right, right. Uh, and then, um, you know, I've had other kinds of experiences over time. Um, after doing, you know, maybe lots of kind of uh, meditation uh, or, uh, we, I, I've, you know, some of the practices that I've done over time was eventually becoming aware of awareness itself. And, and that's always kind of a breakthrough when you realize, oh, that I, I see what, what awareness is more clearly now. Um, another one that really stood out for me was it was actually kind of similar to the Kundalini. Uh, and I, I remember it was in 2007. And that year, uh, I was reading a lot about something that was going on in the world called the oneness blessing. I don't know if you remember hearing about that, Why but you call that one? came out of India. And so yeah. this Indian teacher, um, he ended up teaching a whole lot of people on actually opening up a university called oneness university yeah. of how to do this oneness blessing. And um, the people that, uh, that he trained are called Diksha givers. Mm -hmm. And I, I've forgotten now exactly what the meaning of that word is, but uh, I discovered that there was someone in in Boulder, Colorado, uh, about 10, uh, 20 some miles from where I'm at right now. And um, so I signed up for this oneness blessing and I went to this woman's house and there was a, a group of us there and she gave each of us the oneness blessing. Mm. And in doing that, she she placed her hand on my head and I felt this very powerful energy flow down through, you know, my spine basically, or, or, or uh, uh, any rate, it, it flowed, yeah. yeah, it flowed down through to like to my heart. Yeah. But my reaction to it was very profound. I, I, uh, well, first I felt that as a very, strong energy very warm uh, i think it's very like much probably like reiki um yeah. and uh and then uh she had us lay on the floor and i had this like vivid dream uh, or or um sensation of something happening to me I, the, the two people who 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 teach or formed this uh, oneness blessing, I felt them there in the room with me. And a woman put her hand on my heart and um, the a man was coaching me. And so, but I was feeling this very pow powerful sensations. And then I, I, I had this vision of um, looking out into Basically, I guess I'd say the night sky or day sky, but I was seeing like diamonds in the sky. Um, and I've heard that described like Indra's dream or Indra's. Indra's name. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and um, so it was all very powerful. And I, yeah. out of this group I was with, I was the only one that had that anything like that. Um so it, that stuck with me. And um, the thing that I noticed, well, I think my one sense of oneness, being one with other people and with the world was uh, much stronger after that and remained that way. I wouldn't say that it was a, an awakening as I would understand it today, but um, it was, you know, it was kind of a, an, an awakening and uh, and one of the other things that I think really stayed with me is I had a quieter mind after that. Mm. So yeah, right, takes out the inner dialogue for sure when you have such an uh, epiphany and uh, awakening sort of experience for sure. Wow, I completely understand. Yes, that. yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So 
In addition to your spiritual pursuits, you also have your background in information technology and project management. Have you integrated concepts like success mindset and your conscious choice um, making those into those fields? You know, I have to, uh, to an extent, um, you know, for, uh, for most of what I do, I would say, you know, most of that, you know, the technology knowledge or the, the project management skills um, don't apply too much in my life. But, I, you know, I am a little more maybe more organized person than some people might be. <laughs> I might approach my uh, spiritual study uh, maybe in a different way or, uh, you know, how, how I view. But, uh, you know, it, it just in general, in relating to life or the world, uh, you know, it did give me a very good sense about life, you know, mm -hmm. and and project management plays such a huge role in, in the corporate world. Uh, you know, everything's done via projects. And um, uh, so it's really uh, something big. And, and it gave me the opportunity to really relate to uh, other kinds of people. You know, I when I started out in a profession of information technology, I was very much working with very technical people, doing very technical work. But as a project manager, I had to really then relate much more to business or to the world in general. And certainly even as a manager, uh, you know, you have to learn different skills of interacting with people, et cetera. So all, all of that did apply. Um, probably, again, like I say, not, probably not too much in terms of my view about spirituality or what I think is really important in the world today. Mm, you know, mm. I, I think today we need much more consciousness in the world. And, uh, and I don't think I learned too much about that, like on the job or, or in a career over the years. But, you know, I do sense that now, you know, I've since retired from IT and yeah. project management and, um, I do sense that uh, very slowly the corporate world is beginning to open up to uh, this idea of living more consciously or being more conscious in business, For sure. being uh, aware of you know how the, how they're relating to the world, et cetera. So uh, I think that's a good thing. And mm. um, you know, some of the guests that I've had on my podcast have, have commented on that. They they are really beginning to see some big change there of businesses actually seeking out advisors to how to open up to uh, applying consciousness you know, uh, or awareness more in, in the corporate world. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm seeing yeah. a big growth in that too. And uh... People are um, seeking out uh, mindfulness practitioners and um, meditators to um, assist their businesses in helping right. to strike that work-life balance even more so. Because in doing that, then people actually really enjoy going to work. So <laughs> it's, it's all positive in the end, I think. Now, as someone dedicated to making a positive difference in the world, how do you believe love and awakening can impact individuals and society as a whole? Um, okay, that, <laughs> that's a somewhat deep question there, actually, in, in my view of it, because, um, you know, it can, it can be, the answer to that can be approached on several different levels. I mean, one, anytime we increase our awareness, um, it has benefit, mm. you know, it, we, we, if we are like, for example, responding to people in, in a work environment or in a, uh, you know, in a home environment, you know, how I relate to my wife, um, if I'm doing that with greater awareness, that's always a good thing. And, and awareness is not a, you know, it's not a, uh, uh either or, or on or off awareness has all, you know, many, many different levels. You can always become more aware awareness can always expand and you can let's see things from new 
perspectives that you could never see before. Yeah. So that's that whole that concept right there of uh, having greater perspective, um, a, a broader view, but also I'm when I talk about awareness, I'm talking about a a deeper view, you know, of how of meaning and purpose, uh, you know, and those kinds of things, how how those relate. So, though, you know, in life, generally, all that's always a good thing. You know, if mm. if we had people fully aware. Um, well, well, what I was about to say isn't quite true. <laughs> I was about to say <laughs> we could. Oh, uh, the, all this political divisiveness uh, would shift. It won't shift just on that by itself. It requires something even deeper to get past that. But um, so all of the, you know, that kind of awakening to new perceptions and to uh, greater openness um, and how how we respond to life, you know, is it's just so it's so deep and powerful, yeah. you know, and you. You know, I, as my myself, I've as I've gone through steps of awakening. It's always, it's always there's this uh, better a feeling that I have about myself and about life and about the world. It you know, it's never worse. It's always better, uh, and that's so. Spiritual growth is that's certainly a big part of what it should be about. Uh, but it at at the deepest level, I, you know, I view the universe as one whole, and if so, the more that we understand that everything is interconnected as part of this great whole, then all of a sudden, you know, if we if we describe that as um, being part of the divine or this infinite intelligence, you know, whatever words you want to use, and that 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 intelligence is good and it, it wants the best for all of life, then, you know, if, you know, if I, if I understand that, that, you know, if I see the divinity in you and see the divinity in all of life, all of the world, you know, that means that we're connected at this uh, fundamental level. You know, it gives us more reason to see the oneness in the world instead of the separateness in the world. Yeah, that brings a greater um, yeah. cohesiveness and uh, yes, it's been a plenty of just connection. That's good. That's good. So could you share some insights from your conversations with spiritual teachers and coaches on your podcast, Our Spiritual Life, and what valuable knowledge have you gained from them? Yeah, you know, I have been, um, when I started out as a spiritual podcaster, I was, um, I, I was doing a lot of the episodes of my, myself talking about a subject. And I'm in a number of cases, I would do reading from a, a spiritual book. Uh, later, I started getting more and more into interviews. And so, yeah, I did uh, interview many different coaches of all types uh, spiritual coaches, um, psychic healers, uh, energetic healers, um, life coaches, many different people, with many different perspectives. So I found it totally fascinating. Um, over the last year or so, uh, it, it seems to, that it's increased over, over the, that span of time, several years. I've seen more and more and talk to more and more people who work in energy. So they're energy healers or energy coaches. And I was never very aware of energy. or And really, I'd say at one point, I certainly didn't know if that was useful information or, <laughs> or not, you know. Uh, yeah, I could see that it, it's good to understand the body and feel the body more. And to um, um, have more direct influence on your own body through 
uh, mindset or through energy practices. Um, and but I've come to discover more and more that energy that energy perspective is significant. Yeah. It um, it's something I need to learn more about, and so I've really been paying more attention to it. And I've really come to find that um, the practitioners now that work with what they call quantum energy, um, you know, they're doing some good things. Uh, and I've I've come come across one person in particular that I think is doing really incredible work. Mm -hmm. um, and but. And I don't know if you want me to name names or not, but well, well if they've influenced you so much, then uh, you think they're great. Why not talk about them? <laughs> yeah. Well, that 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 uh, person is Joshua Bloom, and he has what he calls the quantum energy transformation uh, process that that he teaches. But he, with that, he can heal people from almost from most kinds of physical or emotional distress or yeah. pain or problems very quickly mm -hmm. so uh, it's very it's very powerful in that regard but it's um uh what i he's learned some ways of how you can connect to quantum energy uh one at the cellular level um so uh, you know you know if you can move energy through the cells of your body they respond to that energy in very powerful ways, and um, and and one of the teachers that I've studied is studied is Bruce Lipton. He's a mic microbiologist, I think he's described as, um, and he discovered that uh, really the cells of our body are far more intelligent than we generally think about them, and they use quantum energy processes in the way they operate the cells do and um so those those are all very powerful things when you put them get together so um and and also i've come to understand what what the quant you know what people speak about in terms of the quantum field i think many people have many different ideas about what what that is you know and it was first first came from quantum physicists um, when they were really studying, you know, wh what do quanta do, you know, how do they react to different stimulation, et cetera. And they made all those incredible discoveries that you probably know about in the early part of the 1900s, um, like quantum entanglement and, and a number of other different um, behaviors. Um, and, um uh, that the, the understanding of the quantum field over the last 20 years has really increased substantially and there are more and more people that have been able to relate how that quantum behavior of atoms and electrons and photons you know or particles or waves actually does apply to our human life mm. which is at a at the scale much greater scales of uh, of dimension but um quant the quantum field i would describe as being the field of um uh, conscious creation that uh we actually do participate in creating the physical world through our interaction of consciousness and the quantum field Mm, yeah exactly. yeah so um so at any rate that that was all of those things that i've learned have been big to me because it's given me a whole new perspective of okay i'm having greater uh control or awareness of the energy in my body is important because it relates to how i'm interacting at an energetic level you know, and of course, everybody knows these days, yes, everything is energy. So that it becomes much more important. You know, I when I got into spiritual exploration, the teachers I encountered primarily were very, I would say, very conceptual in how they talked about spirituality and taught it. 
Uh, but nowadays, there's a inter energetic ex aspect that's quite important, mm. in my opinion. For sure. Um, now, uh, I've also one of the uh, one of the people that I interviewed about a year ago goes now by the name of Swami Nityananda. And uh, she is a spiritual teacher, um, uh, American born, you know, and uh, she got very interested in spirituality and a lot of that focused on Buddhism. And um, she found this teacher that she worked with over a period of time and he he uh, declared her a Swami uh, when she had this great awakening, uh, you know, and demonstrated how she, uh, that affected the way she behaved in the world. And, but at any rate, she really had a profound effect on me too, because she, uh, projects this, uh, this awareness and this energy, uh, and this joy of life that is at a, a really, uh, high level and something I really admired. Yeah. And so that that was pretty eye opening to me that uh, you can express that level of al aliveness and joy in the world every day, because most yeah. of us don't even those of us who are spiritual, you know, we go through our ups and downs through the day. And um, it's it can be hard to stay in what we might describe as a perfect state of awareness or uh, awakeness in the world. Uh, so yeah, she and, and I just interviewed her again, just very re recently. And um, um, that episode is going to be going out uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, but um, it it's good to see people who are fully awake in demonstrating that kind of awakeness. Mm -hmm. it can, it's, um, it's amazing to see. I don't know if you've ever heard the term satsang. Yeah, I know. I've been to satsang. That's when you, yeah, that's when a spiritual teacher holds a teaching and they call it, often the teacher is sitting down and people are gathered around her and they they can sense and and be activated by that teacher's presence yeah. you know and it's it's actually been fairly recent that i've really come to understand what activation is and right. that's that's when they are they are communicating at a, they, they are being at a high level of frequency high level of energy right. and they they transmit that in a way that activates other people that mm. it suddenly shifts them to greater, to to a new level of awareness. Yeah, they ask questions and uh, get answers from the person holding the satsang, so that they uh, become more aware of themselves and how they are in the world. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I I listen to a lot of um, Ajashanti. You've probably heard of Ajashanti. Um, he's another. He's an American. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I've heard. I have heard that name. Yes, I know who yeah. you're talking. Yeah, he's, I, I, find, I find him pretty good. He's, I actually sometimes think of him as like, um, he does sound like Kermit for some reason. I don't know why that is, but um, <laughs> it's just the way my brain processes information. But um, I, I'm, I really enjoyed his his satsangs for for um, tuning into that what we'd call the Zen sort of space. Um, oh, uh huh. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. it's been yeah, it's been very cool, and um, there is a lot of benefits to that. And uh, I can see how that um, how satsang works for for some people for sure. And, I've enjoyed some satsangs and other ones it's felt like uh, what I call baggage return where you go and you're on a nice flight and you come back and you pick up your baggage and leave. And so, <laughs> so I, I think yeah. these tools take a bit of effort to actually, uh, I mean, you know, like you say, awareness is, is a process, but it's also something that's um, a place of um, having that uh, attention without holding tension on that, on that attention, you know, just like letting it be and being in the, being in the in-between all the time. Yeah, well, the most, you know, the most basic level of awareness, I think, is so important. And um, and I've worked with a few people about this, but um, the 
awareness of yourself to notice what you're noticing it becomes quite powerful if you can notice what you're noticing you know like all of a sudden you you notice that uh oh i didn't react to that other person probably in the best way you know mm -hmm. and and how could i have done that differently if that kind of noticing is so so powerful it's really a it really helps change happen in yourself and mm -hmm. um, yeah quite powerful cool so finally um raymond what message or advice would you like to share with individuals seeking greater joy success and a spiritual fulfillment in their own lives mm. yeah well uh one i certainly would uh really uh, recommend working on awareness in any way um you know i, I the mindfulness practices that um uh, that really uh talk about awareness and not just uh you know doing a mantra like in meditation for example but if you actually do practices to become more aware like in your especially in your daily life or like stop and smell the roses kind of thing you know <laughs> that yeah. that kind of awareness gives you a shift that's always a, a starting point for for uh continuing that for going on to greater awareness so uh but notice what you're noticing uh uh or taking the time to notice the world around you more very can be very powerful and and taking the time these days especially with devices turned off is uh even more so you know we, we are so wrapped up in so so many people are so wrapped up in that iphone or that smartphone and uh responding to it instead of choosing what they want in their life mm -hmm. um but i you know i do think meditation is important uh i do think it can be done in many different ways i do my meditation mostly in not not in sit down meditation but um i do a morning walk with my dog uh, it tends to be very brisk walk for about 40 minutes but i meditate in that walk uh and um over the years i you know i've contemplated on sp uh, spiritual practices or done spiritual practices while i'm on that walk as well but uh so i recommend that to people to combine it with uh you know uh, walking is such a fantastic fantastic form of exercise that uh that's a good way to do two things that are important at once getting exercise and and um and quieting the mind while you're at it mm. i'm sure there are many more things that i could uh suggest here if i think just a moment um you know becoming more aware of feelings uh is something else that I've learned. I mean, you can look at that at, from a very practical point of view, but um, uh, from a understanding energy point of view, you know, we feel energy generally. Now, I've talked, I've heard, I've talked to people who see energy, and so that, I guess that's maybe a little bit different. But uh, most of us feel the energy in our body through feeling it has a you know it has some distinct feeling and um so um and actually i learned in the past year i learned a new word called interoception i learned that from deepak chopra uh, but it means inner body awareness of 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 scanning our body uh the inner body and become more aware of the full body both what we're feeling in the field of energy that is with us and um that 
I, I recommend that because it leads right to what uh, Eckhart Tolle teaches in his, uh, you know, his his teachings about the the power of now, present moment awareness, and it, it's perhaps easiest to be aware of the present moment through your body. Mm, right, right. Right. So, Raymond, how can people find you and learn more about you and get in contact and listen to your podcast? Do you have a website? Uh, yes. So uh, my name is Raymond Posh, and it, Posh is P-O-S-C-H. And so you can learn about me at my website, which is RaymondPosh.com. And uh, my um, my two podcast my older one it will is still out there um over 100 episodes available uh it's called our spiritual life and my newer podcast um i'm i'm just now i think it i just brought out episode seven so it's still fairly new and uh, it is new ways of being Brilliant. and my podcast website is www.newwaysofbeing dot world okay excellent well i'll include that detail in the show notes and i wanted to thank you again raymond for coming on the show and i appreciate you sharing all of your understandings and gifts well thank you so much for having me uh you've asked great questions i've been really enjoyed the conversation and so thank you so much all right you have a good evening <laughs> all right, all you right. Too. bye for now bye, bye. All right, so that's the end of the show, Raymond. Thank you so much. That was cool. And um, yeah, um, yeah, very cool. Thank you very much for sharing with us. All right, so uh, will you share me with me the uh, link to the episode when it uh, releases? You, when, when will that be? I, I can't tell you the date yet because this is my, I've just come back from the holidays and I've got to start figuring out my calendar. Um, but what I'll do is once I've actually edited this one up, probably tomorrow and I've got the date, I'll send you an email direct and, um, and you'll have an understanding of the date that it's coming out and you'll have a, an image of the podcast cover that you can use for your own promotions if you need to. Sounds good. All right. Excellent. Oh. All right. Thanks, Raymond. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. It was certainly an interesting talk with uh, Raymond and I'm certain that you also got some good information out of that and some self-understanding. If you did, please reach out to Raymond um, at the links in the show notes. And if you've enjoyed, enjoyed today's show, please share this to one person that you know will benefit from it. Thank you so much for listening. And until next episode, bye for now. <laughs>